the fields, men of the valleys, men of the seas. I think we're ready to uh, to fill the bucket. We have the emitters in and the proper spacing because we used our stick. Our ends are tied off. Um, the mo here's the most important part of using recycled water or captured off a roof. Uh, anything dirty, dirty type of water. In this kit, in this system, we have to filter it before it goes in this. So what we are going to take uh, is, is a ratty old t-shirt, like this one, and we're going to tie it over the top. That was an inside joke. And this becomes our screen. Okay, use any any kind of cotton. Cotton is the best. Would you say cotton's the best type of cloth to use for this? Because it's going to let the water right through and it's going to keep the, the bad stuff out. Um, tie a bow or some kind of knot that comes right off again because you're going to need to be cleaning this every few days uh, because the, the cotton will get clogged up with sediment and debris and if you're using cooking water or wash water there'll be some soap scum that'll form on top of your filter. So be prepared to take this off quite often and wash it and keep it clean. With a five gallon, with a 20 liter bucket, the family kit, we're, we have to fill the bucket all at once because you'll notice there's no valve anywhere on this system, which means the minute the water goes in the bucket, it's going to start coming out. So we can't use a little bucket. We can't put a little bit in, go back to our water source, because by the time we get back, this water that we put in will probably be gone. And the secret to pushing water all the way through and having it come out equally is to fill it all at once. Okay. So no little buckets. We fill it with a big one. And if you use cotton, it'll go, it goes through pretty fast. I filled this with good old Michigan well water. And even in the time it took me to get it from the, my water source to here, there was all kinds of stuff floating on top of it. But it's not going into our lines because we're using this t-shirt or an old bed sheet, whatever someone's not using, and filtering the, uh, the debris out of it. When we fill it all at once, that gives us as much pressure as we can get out of the system to push the water all the way to the end. The faster we push the water to the end, the sooner it will come out of uh, every emitter equally. That's what we want. Ideally, we want every plant to get the same amount of water. If you can take a look at even just how much scum this is already caught. It's pretty amazing. Uh, let's take a look. Let's want to walk up and down the rows. There's water already coming out. Let's see if it's all the way to the end already. So this water got down here faster than I did. So every emitter right now, 15 seconds later, is putting out the same amount of water to each spot. Sometimes, when you fill the bucket for the very first time, you'll get, there will be air in the line. And the emitters at the end will appear to not be working. Just untie the end of the pipe, 
open it again for a second until water comes out and then seal it back up and tie it off again. And you'll notice that the emitters begin to work immediately after that. Okay, this is fresh turned soil, uh, which means it's really loose, it hasn't settled. The water that's coming out of these emitters right now is for the most part going to go straight down. As the soil starts to settle over the next few days and weeks, you'll notice that the wet spot, which today may only be this big around, every day it will get larger because as the soil settles, then the water will move more horizontally and less vertically. Ideally, we want to space our emitters so that when the bucket is empty, the wet spots from this emitter and this emitter will touch so that we have one solid moist line, the length of the pipe, right over the top of where we put our manure, green manure and our animal manure. And we're going to let one full bucket flow through uh, because we want to pre-moisten the soil before we plant. I'm assuming that where you're doing this uh, it probably hasn't rained in a real long time and your soil may be what we call hydrophobic which means water doesn't soak into it, it sheds water. The soil is phobic, it's afraid of water, it will not accept it. But if we run a couple of buckets of water through slowly like this, we'll break that hydrophobic problem and you'll start to notice that all of a sudden the soil is letting the water soak in. Okay, here's why we wanted this, the, the row that we're planting in, to be as smooth and flat as possible. This water has to move horizontally through the soil, not just down. If we have a trench here, or a footprint, or a big dirt clod, that's going to keep these wet spots from being consistent and coming together. Let's talk about what we mean by gray water. Um, gray water, uh, to me, is something that a human being cannot drink. Uh, the sources would, would be if you're catching the water off of a roof where birds have been sitting and defecating, well obviously you can't drink that, but you can catch it in your big rain barrel and you can transfer that to your drip irrigation system, uh, pretty much as it is. Now if you're using uh, di a cooking water or especially if you're using wash water. You're going to want to combine the dirty water with some clean water. We don't want to put straight out of the uh, laundry tub soapy water in here, but we can dilute it half and half and we make our clean water go just that much farther. Uh, or if you're dipping water out of, a, uh, out of a hole in a dry riverbed, there'll be some mud or sediment in it. Just, that stuff is fine. Just make sure that, that the, everything that goes in this bucket has to go through some sort of filter tied to the top.
garden moves the sun, noon brings the weary man home to his table and his grace. Bow on our knees, thankful that these days are our very.